I think we should just kind of talk about how 2020 is going to go in. You know, well, how how do you feel like 2020 has been? If I'm going to be very honest, I feel like we're in an anime and the big climactic things about to yeah, happen. So big. I at this point, like Holden has shared so many memes with me. I wouldn't be surprised if the Statue of Liberty's face falls off and there's a Titan behind it and it's it's just going to be Attack on Titan at that point. Yes, or, or we end up like Dr. Stone and go to the Stone Ages like at this point anything could happen. Like we've in, we've discovered time travel possibly in parallel universes. UFOs have been confirmed and there's been a global pandemic, murder hornets, rhino disease, like all these other diseases and then like all this stuff and just like violence in general like 2020 has been been crazy like i don't, I don't even know it's been terrible I, I mean i'm ready for 2021 and it's probably going to be worse than like we're already halfway through the year and it's already like we're not this. even halfway through the year yeah we are are we yeah june but we have to finish the sixth month to be halfway through well whatever <laughs> i'm sorry i'm sorry <laughs> just let me be Already, Mo, do you want to do the intro this week? Yeah, let's get it. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Binger's Anime Edition. As always, I am your host, Mo, with my co-host. Maddie, and we're just a little old wee podcast here just to talk about some of the animes we've watched this week. So, Yeah. Yeah, so Mo, how was your week this week or past two weeks? It's been two weeks at this point because we were not feeling it last week. No, it was... Well, also, like, I went back home to, uh... Stillwater? Yeah. Yeah. To How was that? How was town. our college town? It's, you know, if anyone knows what Stillwater, Oklahoma is, where OSU is, it's, it's like, redneck and tiny, and when no one's there for school... It is redneck and college town. Yeah, it's, they're, combined. like, all it's known for is the bars, and then no one's there right now, and everything's closed because of the pandemic, so it's kind of, like... It's actually a lot busier than what you think it really? is. Really? Cool. What did you do? I did nothing. Oh, God. Oh, God. I rearranged my room and I read comics all week. And you watched your lie in April, right? I did. Oh, good, good. We'll talk about that later. I'm excited to talk about it. But, yeah, so we also just released our first, you know... Episodes. Yeah, episodes. We, like, we had our hate official to break, launch. Yeah, like, hate to break it to you guys, but what we have been doing is we've been recording the episodes, like, every other week. Well, every week. And then... We just edited them all and then did like four episode release at the beginning just, you know, to get content out there. So, yeah, since the beginning of May, we've yeah. been doing so this. So this is actually first week after we've been recording. So I don't know how that's going to line up, but, you know, that's why we are not responding yet. So now to all your guys' comments and concerns and your suggestions. And I'm shocked. I genuinely didn't think we'd have anyone listening to us. I mean, the fact that we have somebody from South Korea. And like, well, I mean, I guess my friend Anik is from the Netherlands and she's listened to three episodes, but she just listens to it because our voices sound soothing to her. And I'm like, I'm, I'll am i take it, you know? That makes me feel so good considering that like I, since doing this podcast, I realize I actually have a lisp now. Yeah, it's okay. We all have our thing. I have a lisp too, as we've discussed before, and i Pisses me off, but it's fine. <laughs> It'll be fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. And we also have people from like Germany and Brazil and like a ton of people from Dallas. And I'm like, okay. I know. I'm like, what's up with Dallas? I'm like, okay, I'll take it. Thank you guys. And then we have it's like a the bunch- Texas area. No, the one that gets me the most, we have a ton of people from Washington, Virginia. Yes. I'm like, guys from Washington, Virginia, please like message us because I want to absolutely know nobody I know no one from there so please talk to us like I'm like okay like let's be anime friends I mean I wouldn't be surprised if everyone like listens to the first five minutes for a first episode and they're like I hate this and then they logged off but we still it counts and I'm like I'll take it you know I mean I'll take whatever we can get but yeah I mean the like 20 people listen to like our first episode and that we it's only been it's been less than a week at this point so I'm like okay I'm I'm proud I'm like, I love you guys. Thank you so much for listening to us. And if you're and this almost far, ten people have listened to like the all last of them. One. Yeah, yeah. So, thank you guys so much for being so supportive. We love all of you guys. Like Lucas listened, and he was like, "Bro, your audio sounds good." I'm like, "Why are you listening?" I'm like, "Was it entertaining? Did you enjoy?" It? He's like, "Yeah." I'm like, "You hate anime. Why are you listening to this podcast?" But hey, the Lu- joy of having friends, man. Yeah, I'm like, hey, Lucas, if you're still there listening to us, just. Send me a message and say that you got this far because I'd be shocked if you did. But prove me wrong, my dude. I appreciate your support. I know there's some people 
that like I'm really surprised that have like told me like they they're listening to the podcast. Yeah, I'm like, okay, wait, who has who's told you that they've listened to it? Well, I mean, one my roommate. Really, she's listening to it. I mean, because probably Gabe is like no, that's, making her that's listen true. to it. But I freaking love Gabe, love you, Gabe. If you're out there, and Carson, my big messaged me, and he was like. I almost stopped listening to your guys' podcast because of your JoJo comment because we said the fandom was crazy. I mean, am I wrong? I mean, no offense, Carson, but you're kind of proving the point at this point. But I mean, just because I made a comment about JoJo, okay, it's not bad. Okay, speaking I of don't think fandoms, that it's bad. okay, no, no. Speaking of fandoms, the My Hero app fandom, what the hell? Y'all are getting crazy. On? Like, I mean, I love My Hero, and you love My Hero. And we were like, got it there before the fandom got crazy. But you guys are worse than AOT was a couple of years ago. You're like, and like, I don't know. It's like the worst aspects of every fandom. It's just combined in one, like pedophilia, like BDSM, like all of it. I'm like, why is all this in this fandom? It's. Uh, Dude, I had to remove myself from it because it's so it bad. was just insane. I'm like, I was like, oh, like, oh, I, I'm sorry, y'all. But like, y'all need to stop. This isn't okay. None Take of it's step okay. Step back and look at what you're doing. Uh, it's just, it's crazy. We're doing a call out here. Yeah, calling all of y'all out. Like, y'all need to chill out because you guys are going to ruin the show because it's going to get overhyped like Demon Slayer or your fandom's going to kill it like AOT's did. And I'm like, no, we're not doing this. My hero is a, it's, it's a gem and we're not going to ruin it because of y'all crazy fandom. Please don't ruin the one shonen anime that got me into shonen anime. I thought AOT did that. No. Hmm. I'm disappointed in you. That's what you said on the first episode. I don't remember what I said on the first episode. Well, I do because I've been editing out the shit out of everything. I'm sorry. Yeah. But no, actually, it was My Hero. Okay. Because it was like the first one that I was actually able to watch. Like legit binge in one night. That's true. I binged that like in, I I binged the first three seasons in literally like a week. I think I remember texting you. I'm like, man, I'm on the third season. This is so good. And you're like, what the hell have you been doing? I'm like, I've been staying up all night listening to this. I don't care if to work in the morning. Oh my gosh. Yeah, but No, I do that too though. There'll be like times I'm like I think one time I like texted you when I was like binging something and I was like, Oh my gosh, like this is insane. Oh yeah. And there's a there's a lot of things. There's a lot of times that I've done that. Well, like one of the things is like we love my hero and like Carson's already seen it because, you know, he watches sub. Actually, he only watches sub. He's one of those that hates dub. And I mean, that's all power to you. But like, I like I wa- I started at dub, so I it's, like, I like it's hard for I me like. to switch. And Oops. sorry, a little burp there. Didn't you go watch Heroes Rising though and subbed? Yeah, I watched it subbed. It started off in dub, and I was really excited. And then everyone was like throwing a hissy fit in the um in the theater, and so they switched to sub. And I literally was like, no offense, but I kind of like Maddie was like, please turn it back. Yeah, I was like, I I want it back. I was like, okay. I still haven't seen Heroes Rising, and I really it's want really to. good. But yeah, Carson's like, you need to just watch it stuff because it's so good, and I want to talk to someone about it. And I was like, I'm sorry, but like, I it's hard for me to switch back and forth like like that. Like I I started this dub. I might rewatch the whole thing sub. Like I literally I watch sub and dub back and forth, but it's just like I've I got used to the voices and this it's been four seasons. Like I need to continue it the same way. And I'm watching with my brother and I don't want to watch it twice, you know, like, I'll, like in one week, but I mean, yeah, mm-hmm. like my roommate's boyfriend, he's exactly like that. He is a diehard subber over yeah. dubber, which all power to you guys. I have no hate. And you guys like, honestly, I can see the appeal. Like I can see that it truly captures like the original intention, but also subtitles don't always translate perfectly unless you learn Japanese you'll never actually truly get that I mean experience. yeah definitely I get that and you know that's one thing that I've learned over the years and stuff because I used to be like die hard dub yeah. like I hated sub and oh, then for sure over the years it's gotten to where like you know I'm like okay I can see the appeal of both oh yeah and like I go back and forth. I, I, my first anime I started was sub, and I well I I prefer AOT subbed because I didn't like the dub cast that much. But if a show has a good dub, and it's like a rom com, like we're going to talk about this week, I will probably prefer watching a dub because I'll understand it better, and it'll the drama hits better. But like if it's a shonen anime, uh, a rattle shonen, like I'll probably watch that subbed because like there's. Not much, like, culture-wise, that will be hard to understand, and it won't be that much different, you know? Yeah. Which, like, my hero would be easy. Like, 
not translating over. Yeah. You know, like, especially when it comes to comedy, I like to watch dub because the jokes translate better. Yeah, exactly. And I understand the jokes better. Mm -hmm. And I mean, like, 10 years ago, you didn't even have the option to listen to, like, watch subtitles. It would have to be, like, what is it, fan sub? And oh, that's yeah, not fan dub. Fan dub is like not translated well and it's terrible, but you'd have to watch its subtitles or if you're even like that, you might just have to watch it in Japanese and learn how to speak it. And like so like we've come a long way and you just get fluctuations better dub depending I mean, on the show. It just, you know, it's your preference and there's no hate either way in my opinion. I mean, definitely with the more like westward, you know, inclusion of like mm -hmm. anime, it's definitely increased the popularity. And oh, yeah. so and bringing dub, more voice actors and exactly. bringing more awareness to like I mean, the and animation. And dub voice actors, like they do that for their job and they're good at it. And like, I mean, yeah. And they are good at it. Like I follow a lot of them on TikTok and they share their like, man, the things that people actually said to me after standing in line for so long. And I'm Jay like, Michael Tatum. Right. I'm like, oh, I, I love him up. on TikTok. I do too. They're so funny. But yeah. I want Todd Habercorn to get on. Dude, I TikTok. love Todd Habercorn. He does all the Miss Mojo He's stuff. He's like the best one. OG right there, man. Right? But yeah, so, I mean, since you're not going to ask me how my week went, I guess I'll just talk about it. Um, I'm but... sorry. <laughs> it's I thought fine. we were just going on a little rant. We were on a rant, but I wanted someone to ask how my week went. Okay, well, how was your week, Maddie? Thanks for asking me, Mo. It was awful. It wasn't awful. I, I was my first full week at work, and I was very overwhelmed. I didn't cry this week. It's been better since then, guys. Um, they've given me a lot more stuff to do. And, like, I'm not going to go in huge detail, but to put in perspective, like, I'm designing, like, a building kind of, I mean, heavily supervised. But, like, now I'm doing, like, the elevations, the sections, the construction documents, the door schedules, window schedules, the wall detailing, and, like, doing that all in AutoCAD and doing that in Rhino, I mean, in Revit, and then going to meetings and getting things approved and things changing and then deciding not to do a courtyard design and changing that. And I'm like, oh, it's a lot. And there's a lot more to architecture than I thought there was. And I'm very stressed. I've also just been binging some podcasts that I've been listening to. So it's been fun. I listen to a lot of true crime. And so I found out everyone in the office listens to true crime. And I feel like more people listen to true crime than what we think. Oh, so many people. Like, literally, I'm in the Especially office. Especially, like, the BuzzFeed and Soul stuff. Oh, I love them so much. Giselle and I talk about that all the time. We love watching BuzzFeed and Soul. I love it so much. I love, like, getting a little bit tipsy and oh, watching yeah. BuzzFeed and Oh, yeah. I love it. Because they're so funny. I just, uh, They crack me up. But, yeah, so I sent this TikTok to Holden, and pretty much was, like, when my son watches attack on titan the first time and then it's like this whole like you know musical number and it's just it's perfect i'm like this is exactly our relationship is big little i love it so much and then literally like a couple like the next day tristan my old little but i'm not gonna go that but he went to a different school he messaged like hey i started listening to you guys' podcast and it, like it makes me happy because i don't feel so alone when i'm like working at these houses and stuff and i'm like oh, i love you tristan i miss you buddy said that yes i was like i love you tristan so it warmed my heart, and then I'm like holding, Endearing. and I love talking to Holden. I'm like, I'm like, I love my little. What up, Tristan? Yeah, what up, Tristan? We haven't seen you in forever. I haven't seen you. In I've forever, seen you, but I've seen, yeah, I'm, it's good. It's been good, but yeah, not a lot's happened. I went to the bars a couple of times with a few friends from high school. Um, I have literally random people saying they're gonna listen to my podcast just because they're good friends. I'm like, I love you guys. Shout out to all of our friends. Um, we should probably actually get into it now since we've been rambling for yeah, what, literally 15 like minutes? 20 minutes of just... I just wanted to be, you know, loved and someone to ask me how my wake was going. I'm sorry. Which I'll has be a... more attentive to your thank needs. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very needy. But, um, oh, sorry. One other thing. I was, my parents were like, we're going to listen to your podcast. And I literally was like... No, my mom said that she was going to listen to my podcast. I was like, podcast. oh. Oh, are you now? And like, I'm surprised your parents said that. Oh, well, like they hate, they don't like anime. They think it's stupid. Yeah, that's why. I'm like, surprised. okay, cool. But that's not the issue. I don't care about that. But I'll just like say I don't have the the cleanest mouth on this podcast. No, literally, I was in the car with my mom, and we were driving back to her house, and she was like, "What's the name of your podcast?" And I was like, "Binger's Anime Edition." And she's like, "Okay, I'm gonna listen to it." And I was like, you're going to listen to an anime podcast. And she's like, yeah. And I was like, 
someone who's totally not into anime and has never watched a single anime in her life is going to listen to an anime podcast. Which, I mean, okay, it's one thing, like, I get, I'm like, they're trying to be supportive. I'm like, that's cool. But, like, I don't know. It just it kind of just took me out of left field. And I'm and like, she, yeah, my mom, she was like, I'm just going to listen to it because it's you. And I was like, mom. I'm like, that's so sweet. But you're going to be so disappointed in me. <laughs> No, honestly, though, my brother has kind of been plugging our podcast. Oh, has he really? Maybe yeah. that's why all these people... Hey, if Mo's brother's been plugging it, and that's the reason why you're listening, let us know so we can give him a shout out. Yeah, because we were like talking about it the other day in the car, and he's like, oh, yeah, my best friend was asking about it the other day. I know, right. One of my friends is like, oh, my sister would love that. Let me know when it comes out. I'm like, oh, okay. So I'm like, all the weebs. Are uniting in Oklahoma. It's like we have I'm here for secret it. weeps coming out right? of like our friend group. Like I, some random person from Mustang, Oklahoma, and Oshaleda, which I am pretty sure I'm the one from Oshaleda because I live in Oshaleda now that I think about it. Yeah, like the one person from Oshaleda. That's probably me, because I live so south. Like of the town. one person from Bartlesville is me. Yeah, just gonna let you know. Yeah, no, I know who it is. It's Dylan. Is it? Yeah, Did he, he listened to it. Yeah, to it? he said it was good. Did he say it was really good? Yeah, and like, well, you know, Dalton is like getting TikTok famous now. TikTok, yes. Famous. Like, I keep he keeps posting up on my feed. I'm like, hey, Dalton. So like, I know when I first saw him on Instagram, and I was like, I think this is Dalton. I was like, what the hell? I'm like, he's a nurse, and that looks exactly like Dalton. I was like, this is Dalton, right? I was and you like, were like, oh my god, that is Dalton. I was like, oh my god. So I texted Dylan, and I called him. I'm like, dude, like, what the hell's going on? And he's like, yeah, he's TikTok famous. I'm like. What the hell? I was like, this is awesome. And I was like, I know a TikTok so star. I was reading like a lot of the comments and stuff. And a lot of them were like, this dude's simping too hard. Oh my gosh. Well, y'all are hating. Dalton is a gem. I loved I, I loved him so much when we worked like at work, like at Egbert's and stuff. He was such a, a great celebrity. guy. I know a TikTok celebrity. Well, I mean, that's not my point. I mean, like he's a good guy. Like he's generally a good dude. I know. I'm just trying to be funny. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't understand the humor here. Yeah. It went over my head. Because... Be. He's TikTok famous. But, I mean, he's a good guy. Like, he he was always super real with everyone, and he always said hi to me when I didn't talk to anyone for the first year I worked there. Oh, God. I went back to Egbert's yesterday. Did you not yesterday. really talk to anybody until I got there? Uh, I started opening up before you got there, but, you know, I worked there for over a year before you, and I was terrified, yeah. so I just cleaned the floor. Like I, I mean, that was literally me in the first year, so. Yeah, I was, and now I literally thought about this if i kept working there this summer i would have worked there for five years damn five years at egbert's and like i love the job but it was hell i hate it i don't like work i worked there for three. Oh god it was awful it was so bad but i loved my coworker. i went back there yesterday and like it was like a party everyone was there it was great so they're all back to work now yeah, everyone's there, but like Stevie and Christian were there, and they don't work there anymore. But they were just eating there, and I was there. And then like I saw Lacey, and I saw Boy Christian, and like Dustin. And it was just nice seeing everyone, Donovan and Chris. So it was good seeing them all. You know, I was like, "Hey guys!" And they're all like, "You look so sophisticated in your internship attire." I'm like, "I'm wearing jeans and a flannel." But thank you guys. Honestly, Egbert's kind of sounds good right now. Honestly, it was good. I had a burger. I don't want to go eat there now. I'm kind of hungry. Do you want to go eat there after this? Yes. Okay, we're doing that. <laughs> I'm going to talk you about our meal plans. Oh, let's see if Giselle's there. I love Giselle. I miss Giselle so much. Let's just have a party. We're going to have a party. We'll meet you guys at Egbert's, you know, anyone? This That's not how this works at all. <laughs> it's like this podcast. This episode's going to go up in like the next three weeks and everybody's like lining up at Egbert's. Right? And I'm like, oh my God. And then Mike's going to be like, where did all this business come from? I'll be like, hey anime nerds Those are anime weave friends i'm like i love it but i'll wear in like tokyo ghoul shirts oh my and like God. hunter hunter dylan and... would legit be wearing a tokyo ghoul shirt he loves kaneki so much uh, kaneki kaneki but the finger thing yeah just to like let how you... you can tell like, oh yeah like, somebody is uh... <laughs> i do True that all i do that all the time now when i get mad i just like I'm, if i'm stressed out i just start cracking my knuckles just like that and i'm like and i see people do it i'm like she <laughs> And just cracking your knuckles and I just and I see someone start doing this when they're stressed out and I'm like Tokyo Ghoul and I'll just like open my laptop and show them some anime stuff and they'll be like you watch anime and I'm like yes I do how about not gonna about lie it? whenever I see somebody wearing like anime merch or mm -hmm. anything like that 
like especially when it's like Tokyo Ghoul, oh, yeah. I'll start playing the opening song in my oh, head. Oh <laughs> yeah, there's this guy in my studio. I need to text him and tell him about this. But he his screensaver, his desktop screensaver is like Deku, and he wears this uh, Kira shirt all the time. Ooh, Akira. Yeah, from the old, that old older anime. It's a movie. A movie. I am so sorry. Um, because they're making a live action of it. They have been for the past ten years. But, I hate um, live actions. Please stop. Well, you know, like Inception was a live action, pretty much remake of Paprika. It's the exact same plot and the same visual shots from Paprika, just more Western. Have yeah. you ever seen Inception? No. Yeah, me neither. I just saw <laughs> Why this on are YouTube. You about I saw it, it on YouTube and watched the scenes. I'm like, what the hell? I'm like, y'all copyright this shit. No, I don't watch anything. Well, like, The Lion King is just, like, a copy from, like, apparently an anime. The Lion King is a... A Hamlet reference. Hamlet but reference. But the anime was a Hamlet reference, and then it was, like, what was it? It was, like, it wasn't Simba. It was, like, no, it was Simba the Snow Leopard or something. Oh, I know what you're talking about. It was one, but the lions were, like, white. Yeah, and, like, the same idea. It was this based off of Hamlet, and then the anime was... I mean, the Lion King movie came out a couple of years later after Walt Disney had talked to the creator of that show. And I was like... Yeah. I know what you're talking I was about. Like, That's here. <laughs> but I was like, the Lion King is based on Hamlet. Like, uh, You're like, you're an idiot. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, but... It's like, know your Disney references. Oh, I'm so sorry. But, yeah. We'll go to Egbert's now. Honestly, it sounds really good. Yeah. Alrighty, Mo, we should probably finally like get into the actual like content of this episode. Yeah, we've been like rambling for what, like thirty minutes now? Dude, like literally we've been rambling for so long it's bad. Honestly though, whenever we get together we just like we stay apart for so long that we have to catch up on yeah, so like, much. Guys, the best way to explain our friendship is literally like Mo and I hang out way too much for like a day and then we take a two or months for, off. Like a couple days. Two, like a couple days and then for two months we don't see each other. So I don't know why we decided to do this podcast because we see each other too much and we're probably going to hate each other. I, I see you way too much now. Yeah, I'm not here for it. Well, also we're stuck in Bartles and there's no one here. Yeah. Oh gosh, we're rambling again. We are still not getting into it. Let's go, get okay, into okay, it. Okay, okay, okay. So Mo, what did we watch this week? We watched Your Lie in April. Which is one of my favorite rom-coms and like, I mean- You'll see this everywhere. It's a very popular anime. It came out in 2016. Um, it was created by A1 Studio. It's just, it's really gorgeous. It's beautifully done. The music's great. It's all together just a really good anime. And like, I, I, I'm glad someone, requ- I'm glad Chase requested us to do this because I really did want to do this show. Yeah, and- definitely. Like my first impressions of this were that it was just going to be very, lighthearted nothing oh, yeah. was you know rom commy, you know middle schooler Cute, yeah and then like it just like ripped your heart out yeah and like i mean i it, i mean there's there's a lot of jokes going like oh this is your cry in april because it'll make you cry like i didn't cry that much i teared up a lot like especially towards the end and dis- full disclosure guys to the very end of this, we're probably going to like talk about the moments that made us tear up the most, and it's going to be heavy spoilers. So we will definitely like tell you guys then. Yeah. Like, skip this part if you do not have seen the show yet, because truly you should watch it and feel them the feel the moments. But there will be spoilers, and this is when the well, show. Then again, that... I feel like the anime has been out for so long now. That's true. Everyone that knows everybody what knows what happens. Whenever you hear something that's your cry in April, you kind of get the idea of like what. I mean, will happen. definitely. Like I knew what was going to happen at oh, the yeah. end, and so. Like going in, I like I. It's like you know the ending. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, this anime is like six years old now. Yeah. Well, no, it came out in twenty sixteen. It came out twenty fourteen. Never mind. I'm wrong. Am I wrong? It came out October of ninth tw- of twenty fourteen. I'll look at that. October twenty fourteen to March twenty fifteen. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's y'all. six years old. It's six years old. But yeah. Um. I mean, it's five years old, but... But yeah, like we kind of already said, it's a rom-com. That's not really wrong. I would say it's more of a romantic drama. Um, heavily music fa- music focused. We'll talk about the synopsis in a bit. But A1 Studios produced it. Um, they're the same studio. They're the ones that do all the gorgeous stuff, like Oahana. Oh- Anna Hana yeah, and, and Erased, SAO. SAO, Black Butler. Yeah, they, they are really good at coming up with some quality stuff. Um, I mean, and they're the ones that I feel like aren't 
too shy to hit on like the really hard topics oh, like yeah. that are in erased oh, yeah. or on ohana and your line april <laughs> and your line as we april. will talk about but also um you can watch it on netflix and hulu it's also in crunchyroll and funimation you can watch it dubbed on netflix and hulu just has the sub, honestly so. it's such a popular anime you, you can, can watch find it, it anywhere. anywhere yeah it's only 22 episodes which is kind of weird instead of 26 but it's really good so yeah um do you want me to kind of go through the synopsis real quick? Yeah, why don't you go through okay, the synopsis? Because cool. guys, it's pretty basic. Um, our main character is a piano prodigy, and then after a traumatic event, he stops listening. He can't hear music anymore, and pretty much he stops playing music for two years. And then he meets this girl in their last year of middle school, middle school, which is so about fifteen, I think. Wait, fifteen? Fourteen, fifteen. Fourteen, fifteen. We don't know for sure their age. We were confused earlier. It's and, either like eighth grade, ninth grade, yeah, in like and then, American school terms. Exactly. And this girl pretty much is just like forces him back into the world of music and he pretty much overcomes his trauma and all this all the characters help him through this and it's pretty much this beautiful dialogue between everyone and musical performances that show how to overcome this trauma that he's gone through, these traumatic events and to get back into music and find his passion for it. And also kind of touches up on everyone else's like issues and their traumas and so that's i think the synopsis of it yeah i mean that's basically it it's just boy loses hope girl gives his hope back yeah, you know pretty much and they to sum it down to like five words <laughs> yeah and it's heavily focused on music there's a lot of musical performances in this because there's pianist there's violinist and it's it's the classical music aspect is beautiful in this the animation is beautiful in this and overall really quality anime I mean, everything was very well done yeah for i sure. mean considering that the director of this anime it was his first ever mm -hmm. time directing he did an exceptional he job did. and you can tell that the music director is like well renowned he does everything almost it seems like he was on point oh, like yeah. he knew what he was the doing. music is really good in it and i love it and the storyboard telling is also very good um mo do you kind of want to talk about one the, like the first character, the main character and stuff. A yeah, bit. let's talk about Kosei Arima. Yes, the main character. The main character, and he's kind of really the only main character because. Yeah, I mean, I, I would mean, say that the four, the trio, the, not the trio, the, the the four main characters are all main characters, but the story revolves only around him. I yeah. would say. Because everything that each of the characters does is to push Arima along mm -hmm, and to push mm -hmm. Kosei. Um, I mean, though, every one of them kind of has their own little push or revelation, yeah, exactly. but it's not in a big sense as like Kosei's. Yeah, it's heavily focused on Kosei. He's a shy, very pessimistic, dealing with a lot of trauma. Um, he's the pianist and it's pretty much that character. Um, he is life is very influenced by his sickly elderly mother, not elderly, sickly mother, Saki Arima. Um. You kind of want to describe this character for a little for us for a little bit. Oh my gosh, Saki, 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 Saki. That bitch. Yeah, in four words or less, oh, that yeah. bitch. She she's a lot. Um, but she honestly, I hated her in the beginning. Yeah, I, I did absolutely too. hated her. In and the if beginning. and if you've seen the show, I mean, this isn't much of a spoiler, but like if you've seen the show, you know what scene we're talking about. Where. And She's very physically, emotionally, verbally abusive to Arma. And the whole time I was just like, I was like, I hate this woman. Like, why is she being like that? Yeah. And then finally it went into like a backstory of like why she is the way she is. Yeah. And I, I mean, like, I don't excuse anything of what she did. It was not right and not the way to go about exactly. it. Exactly. But I understand why she did yeah, it. Yeah, and like. She's a world-renowned pianist, and then she gets a terminal illness, and she can no longer play. So she just kind of forces her dreams onto Arima and teaches her him how to play the piano perfectly. So he's the human metronome, and like not like interpreting that like, and like the reason she does it is because she wants him to be able to work in the future. Yeah, he wants she wants him to be able to be like competitively successful and, and be like get perfect. It money and like a job. And, and she like... and there's literally a scene where she's talking to um her best friend and it's like i hope i did enough because i didn't have time to teach her the passion of music and that i only could teach him like how to play the music perfectly and be successful like is he going to make a career and towards the end on the flashbacks like you understand her motivations 
and why Arima did love her. But for me, like I was like, it doesn't excuse that she was what she did. And I, 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 it made me mad at first the first time watching it that Arima wasn't more mad about his mother. I mean, definitely in the very like in the first eleven episodes, we see Saki as like this character that's mm-hmm. very distant, and you know, I mean, that's why they don't show her eyes. You know, yeah. it's because she's like a very distant character, and they want to portray that with her, and then. Later as we go, we start seeing her more as, like, a human rather than yep. somebody that's, yep. like, domineering and so abusive to, like, Kosei. We start seeing her yeah. as more of, like, and a like, human. In the flashbacks, other people see her be super abusive to Arima, and they're just terrified of her, and they don't say anything about it. Because she's also very sick, and she's going to die, soon, and she's terminally ill. It's kind of like an allegory that, like, you don't know what's going on in somebody's life. Exactly, and... The first time I watched it, because I watched the first time subbed and the second time dubbed, just disclaimer. First time I watched it, I was really upset by it, that they were not trying to, like, no one was telling Arma, like, what your mom did was not okay. Never once does that said. And it just made me mad. But then rewatching it, I was like, but because she loved her, like, loved him. And, like, she also is terminally ill. She's going through a lot. Like, it doesn't excuse that, but also... We have never experienced that, like the two of us, and it's hard to know how you react in those moments. And but she still loved him, and like I'm like I understand that now. And I was like, okay, this is giving me a new perspective of this character, and I am glad I got that perspective because at first I hated this character. And it's like you know I was like texting you the other day because you were saying like, oh, how are you liking it and all that, and I was like, it's getting harder to watch. Yeah. And you were like, well, don't you like it? And I was like, no, I like it. And that's why it is getting harder to watch because they give you such real and raw emotion. Exactly. And we'll go more in detail on that in a little bit when we talk about like the visuals. But do you kind of want to talk about the next main character? Yeah, let's talk about Kaori Miyazono. <laughs> the best character in this anime. <laughs> I love her. She's such like a bright light. Like, Oh, yeah. I like... The whole shift of how, like, how Kosei sees his world before he meets Cowdy and, how, and after yeah. is just, like, you know, I mean, if you've ever seen the anime, you know the shift between, like, the muted colors to, like, the vivid colors yes, is because exactly when, she is this she light shows up. and yeah. bright and happy person. Yeah, she's this um, very eccentric via, um, violin, violinist? Violinist. Whoa, violinist. Wow, I'm sorry, y'all. You're losing your tongue there. I, oh, it's gone. It just... It just ran off, but she's very bubbly, very bright, and very, she has such a great story, like her story. The whole anime just portrays it so well, and I just love this character so much. Well, I like how she, like, keeps a positive attitude oh, yeah. so much through what she's going through. And she keeps what she's going through to herself until the very end, and even then, she kind of keeps it to herself the whole time, and I'm not, we're not going to. We're going to indulge in some stuff later, but right now we won't go into detail about that kind of stuff, but her story is beautiful. And... Well, I like how she's like, you know, I'm going to, you know, reach out to every day and I'm yeah. not going to hold anything back and I'm going to do what I want to do and, exactly. you know, not going to let any regrets, you know, exactly. pass me by. And she truly, and she plays music like it's hers and it's she plays it with passion. Which like, is not how... her, like, heart. Yeah, and, like, whereas Arima plays it like the human metronome, she plays it with passion, and she makes the music her own, and she does not let the music... She doesn't let anything control her or tell her what to do. She's going to live life how she wants to live it, and that's why the fans love her so much while the judges hate her, because she does she tears up the music and doesn't even... Like, she doesn't play it at all like it's written, And but I thought it was... I love that character, and it, it was essential for Arima to ever move on from what he's been going through in his life. But yeah, overall, that character is just very beautifully done. Um, do you want me to talk about the next two main characters, quote unquote? Yeah, let's talk about Subaki and Watari. Yeah, so Subaki and Watari are pretty much Arima's childhood friends. Uh, Subaki is the softball player jock, typical, you know, very stubborn. Tomboy girl. Yeah, she literally constantly is like beating on Arima, like kicking him. And then Watery is like the soccer player, ladies' man, captain of the team. Like Casanova. Yeah, talking to every single character. And I mean, that's pretty much them. Um, there's a weird love triangle between Sabaki, um, Arima, and Karui. Kar- no. Kaori. I can't say it. I'm sorry. But the, between the three of them, which kind of goes through the whole show, um, that's why it's a rom com. And then Watery 
is the only one kind of pursuing um Kaori. Cowdy. Yes. I mean, like he's like pursuing Cowdy, and well, I mean, she says that she likes him. So yeah. the whole show, they're you know they're talking and pursuing each other, um, and so that's interesting. Uh, he he's portrayed though that he doesn't he's not he doesn't get hunkered down by one woman. He kind of just like oh she's hot I like her. She's like he hops around a lot. He's like a different girl like every week. Oh yeah, for sure. But yeah, um, there's a couple other characters we should probably talk about. Do you want to talk about the other two pianists? Yeah, let's talk about uh, Takahashi and Emmy. Yeah. I loved these two because... I did too. I mean, it shows part of, like, Kosei's, like, piano past, but mm-hmm. also, like... The new. Put, yeah, the new and, like, how they, like, aren't his enemy, exactly. but then again... They're their rivals. They're their rivals. Like, they pushed each other to be greater. Like, Emmy, the only reason why she plays piano is because she was moved so much by um, Arama's performance one day and... The same one that moved apparently everyone in this entire show, but like she that she plays to show that passion. I mean, when I first saw these two characters, I honestly thought I was gonna hate them. Yeah, because I thought they were going to be total bitches. But to they're not Kosei. But they're not. And the they were like, it, you know, they're like his friends. They're like his, you know. And you can tell that, like, by the end of it, they'll probably always be friends. They're going to be the rivals pushing each other. It's going to be just like um, Saki, Arima, and um, her best friend. Like they're both very yes, prominent Seto pianists. Hiroko. Yes, and they're very prominent. And they push each other to be better, and they're so good friends. Um, Takashi uh, pretty much is driven because he views Arma as a hero, and he just wants to play the music. Someone who's like perfect in every exactly. way. Exactly, and, and like, he just he's like Arma's perfect. I want to be just as perfect. I'm going to be like in just the death they good. described it as like a robot. Exactly, and that's kind of their motivations. They have some beautiful performances as well. Then Nagi Takashi? Yeah, Nagi is Takashi's sister. Yeah, so I Aiza. Eyes yeah. Aiza. Nah, that's their last name. That's right. I was like, it's not that's not right. But you don't want to talk about her a little bit? I feel like you like yeah. this character a lot. I like her. I she's think cute. she's cute. Yeah. You know? I mean, you know, as like watching throughout like the whole anime and stuff, I'm like, you know, Wondering, like, oh, like, all these characters are, like, in love with, like, Kosei, and, you know, you're like, who's he going to end up with? Yeah, exactly. You know? Because, like, there's two girls, like, I could think of, is, you oh, know? yeah, for sure. And then Emmy also is in love with him, and then Nagi. I don't know. I just don't see, cliche. like... Yeah, it's weird. But, um... It's just a weird... It's weird. When Nagi first showed up, I legit thought that she was trying to kill Arima, and I was like, what the hell is going on? And then it's just interesting, like, her well, mode- she just wants to be noticed by her big brother, and she literally just brings his biggest rival to this piano, like this like showcase at her school, and pisses off everyone. And they play amazingly, of course. Well, for a second, I thought that like Nagi was uh, Cowdy's younger sister. Oh, really? Yeah. When I first saw her, I was like, she kind of looks like Cowdy a little bit, mm-hmm. and so I was like, oh, maybe that's. And then they were like, oh, it's Takashi's little sister, and I was like, now it makes sense. It does make a lot more sense. But yeah, and then. The final two characters, um, there is Saki's best friend, who is, what's her name again? The other I pianist. I can't remember. Wait, what other pianist? Seto. Seto Hiroko? Yes. Oh, for some reason I thought you were talking about like Subaki's friend, and I was like, I can't remember what her oh, name is. Oh, I know is. her name, but Seto. Um, Hiroko. She... Pretty much is, you know, Saki's best friend growing up and then... Kind of like a second mom to Yeah, Kosei. but then she, like, disappears for two years after his mom died and he's just kind of like, she's kind of like, I need to step out because I was pushing you too hard. And I'm like, no one's taking care of this child. Like... Yeah, dad's gone. Like, he's just living in this house by himself. By himself for two years. I'm like, you're a bitch. I was like, you needed to be there for him. But she comes back and she... she I love this character. She's so blunt. She's so... She's so mom like, especially yeah, to Kose. Like, I loved it so much, and even Nagi to a certain extent. Like she's there for them, and like, I'm like you know, like if they hadn't said that, like Seto Hiroko wasn't his mom, I would have thought that. that oh was yeah, his mom. for sure. And I love that character. I think she helped a lot for um, Arima's development. I mean, definitely like the motivation and like pushing him exactly. to you know exactly like making him tutor Nagi and all that kind of you know exactly opening him up to different experiences. 
Yeah, and then that's pretty much all the characters. There's also another character that is Sabaki's best friend. Um, what's her name? I have it written down. She's very, very supporting character. Like, uh, yeah, I can't read my handwriting. I think it's Kashiwaga. Kashiwaga. Oh, I said it right. Yeah, so she pretty much is the only reason why Sabaki realizes her feelings for Kosei. And I mean, that's kind of like her only purpose throughout mm-hmm. the whole. Anime. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. She knows everything about Arimevo, but yeah, and then. Um, but pretty much her whole yeah. thing was just to push Subaki to be like, exactly. I like you. But I liked her humor. I thought she was funny. Yeah. I mean, I didn't really notice her until like the last couple episodes. But... That's true. I, I thought she, I liked her because I relate a lot to her, I guess, because I'm really blunt and dry. Like, I mean, to like each his own. But yeah. I mean, I didn't say she's like a bad character or anything. No, but... yeah, you're, you're right. But that's pretty much the characters in the show. We've already kind of talked about like, how all these characters help push Arima and it's all about his life and how their interactions with him help him grow and I wish that all the supporting characters had more backstory and it wasn't so much like they were the ones pushing Arima and that's their only purpose I wish that we focus more on Wachari or Sabaki and their like life I yeah sometimes like I would have liked to see because it's clear that Wachari develops too but he doesn't just care about he, d- he doesn't care about girls he just hops from girl to girl by the end of it it kind of shows that he cares about one girl specifically and i wish that they focused more on that and they showed that his development as well i mean yeah that's true but sometimes i feel like when it can either go two ways is that they put too much detail into Mm -hmm. the story and it gets kind of off track or i mean it's only 22 episodes they could have done a full 26 and those extra four episodes to focus on watchery and sabaki and stuff like i felt like nagi had more development than they did. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think that would have been interesting to see. But, you know, I think also doing just the focus on Arma might have been what made this show so beautiful. But, I mean, yeah, because, like, the whole show, the point was for, you know, him to go to one point and get to the next. Yeah, you know, exactly. And, you know, though, like, maybe, like, a little bit of backstory from each of, like, the side characters would have been okay. But yeah. I just feel like it would have been run down with, like, too many That's details. true. That's true. But, um... The other thing is that sub and dub, so I watched it both, and you watched a dub. Honestly, guys, there's not much difference between the two. Like, especially Akari's voice actress, she did such a good job in the dub. Like, I didn't feel like that took away at all, which is what I thought would happen after I finished the sub. And also everyone's, all the dub actors' names are Erica or Eric, which I thought was funny. But, um... It's one of those shows, once again, that like watching it in your native language just helps so much in understanding some of the comedy and stuff in it. I mean, definitely, because it also talks about some really like harsh subjects, exactly. too, that it gets... Having it translated over into like an English dub, you know, we, we kind of take like our own culture and mm-hmm. like put it mm-hmm. into like the dub and, you know, and I feel like that also just kind of helps with, exactly. yeah. you know, really understanding the story. Exactly. Um, but yeah, so that's the characters. Do you, I think we should probably yeah, get into should. the visuals next. I love the visuals. Dude, this, this show, was my favorite part. I think this show, what made this show so good was that the animation was so beautifully done. Yes. I love all the colors that were used. I love oh, the pinks yes. and the blues exactly. and the yellows. Like and those like, were like the three main colors they I feel like were the used. The bright colors for the happy moments, but then they used the gray muted colors to really show the low points and especially Arima's life and all the characters lives and like, I loved that definitely when I was talking about how you know Arima's life was so muted before exactly and then when he met Cowdy it was just like vivid bright yes, colors exactly. everywhere and then like the use of colors in different seasons it just picture it captured each season so beautifully and I loved that as well like you could like color played like an exceptional role in Oh, yeah. Just exactly. narrating this whole show. And then, like, when they used a lesser art style for, like, comedic moments. I appreciated that as well. Like, I thought... Like a softer, like... Yeah, and, like, I think when you watch... it, Let's say you watched it sub, it's easier to understand the comedy moments because they use that different art style. And I like that. I mean, it's very, it's very like, the manga. It's very panels like that. And I like that because I think it's funny. Yeah, like, when Cowdy's, like, yelling at Kosei. Or, or beating like, him. beating him As up, they always or... are beating him whenever there's a comedy moment. Yeah, like... That trip was a little the... much, but it yeah, was funny. Yeah, some of their things were... 
Okay. Like the baseball thing. The very first episode when yes. he got hit in the head with the baseball. I thought like. And it was like a pool of blood. Okay, I knew this was a sad show. So I thought Arma died in the first episode. I was like, oh my gosh, he died. And I'm like, oh, he's just got hit with a baseball and it's bleeding all over. And I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, it's just I was funny. like. I was like, okay, we're going to get into like a pool of blood in the first episode. I was like, wait, this is not the show I was expecting. It's not that type but of show. But it was like funny when I was watching it on Netflix. You know, it has, you know, the little like rating thing where it says like PG 13, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, PG. You know, and it said like it was PG-13. And the reason that it was PG-13 was for gore. Oh, my gosh. No, the reason it's PG-13 like, is because of the tough topics it covers. No, but I, just, I thought it was funny that it said that it was PG-13 because of gore. Yeah, I, I mean, honestly, <laughs> that's kind of funny. But um, also, I wrote this note down just because I thought it was funny. The fact that they have lips, I thought was very interesting because most enemies don't include lips in their characters. But... Just a side note. Um, yeah, but I like how it almost feels like ethereal, you know? Like, yes, it's very it's very eccentric and very ethereal, like you said. I love that aspect of it, too. Like, it, it's like, it's like almost like you really want to touch it, but you just, like, can't. You can't. And, like, the eyes, everything with the eyes, how they had the eyes glitter and they moved and the, just, oh, I remember rewatching it and I'm like, oh, my God, this is beautiful. Like, why did I not appreciate this much the first time? And I just, I think it's just because it's been a whole year and I just appreciate anime more now that I'm doing this podcast that I'm looking for those things. I'm like, oh, this is good. I know, like in like rewatching things, mm-hmm. it's like I'm noticing more details than oh, yeah. what I watched the first time. Exactly. And then like the symbolism in it. So like the show tackles some very tough topics like Arma's depression, his panic attacks. All the characters and anxiety, sickness. And the way they visualize that is so beautiful. Like, you know, the whole water thing. Like, you want to talk about that? Yeah, definitely. One of the things that I, it's very hard in just even normal television to depict depression or anxiety or panic attacks. And especially when it comes to animation, that's Mm -hmm. also very hard. I loved the way that they did this. Yes. How they depicted his panic attacks Mm -hmm. with. Um, the water. The water, like he's you know, playing like the he's, piano in like, a pool of water. I love yes, that. Yes, and like, it's like he's like drowning, and that's exactly what a panic attack feels like. If anybody's ever had a panic attack, then that, it feels like you're drowning. Literally drowning, and like he can't hear the music, and it, all he can hear is the thumping of the keys, and that was very beautifully done. And then anytime he hears the whisperings and his own self-doubt coming into, he's just walking down a white, on a white floor, and all the whisperings are just shadows of people talking and saying these awful things about him. And, like, it just it depicts that depression, the trauma, those tough topics with the colors, the muted colors, also the symbolism with the different sh- shots and stuff. And then the water is just – I think this is one of the few shows that actually depicts that in very well. And, like, even – Yeah, I, that's one yeah. aspect of it that I was very surprised about. Exactly. I was, like – Like, the trembling of the hands, even. Like, it, well, it's very surprising. That's why I – said that it was so hard to watch it because it was like i feel their pain you like, know so often in like both anime and also just western um tv is that people just get over the trauma very quickly or they dwell on it for like three seasons and so it was i felt like this show did a very good job of visualizing that and truly getting you to feel that as well as not having you dwell too long on it and being able to move on from it but also Folk, like saying this like trauma, this is traumatic. Right way. Keep in mind, these people, these kids are like early teenagers. Like they're 14, in middle school. 15. Like they are going through a, like especially Arma, he's gone through shit. And I thought they did a really good job of showing that trauma and the visuals, especially even the music. It was just, I thought it was very beautiful. Most definitely. Like, and how like I was saying that like color like plays mm-hmm. an exceptional role. Yeah. You know, and and defining like moments, mm-hmm. and it's like how when like Cowdy got sick, yeah, you know, and like how like all of the color just drained out of her, and she exactly. just wasn't this like vibrant life anymore. Her skin got whiter, and her hair got whiter, and exactly, you know, it was like all of the life and color that was in that span, you know, it just that, changed. I mean, it just changed, yeah. and that was really good. Done. That was very, very good done, very well done, and. Like the CGI they used as well was very interesting and yeah, 
Sorry. No, I really liked the CGI. I have a really big problem with CGI just because, like, I see it and I just want to, like, cringe and, like, mm-hmm. you know, stop watching. But, you know, like, of course you can, like, tell that it's, like, CGI and, like, but some also, shots like, and stuff. But also, playing the piano, but... you can't, like, that's hard. Like, yeah. playing a piano, well, you drawing like, that, I couldn't even imagine them trying to do that. Well, especially trying to have the fingers hit the keys, like, with you know, the with the music yeah. and make it look as realistic as possible. It's it's very hard. And, and especially they did with a good the job. violin, you know, yeah. like having their left hand moving with the bow and, and the right hand with the bow, you it's know. A, it's very hard. But, yeah, they did a really good job at that. The one thing I will say about the animation is that I'm very impressed that all of the violins were hand-drawn. Oh, yeah, that's Almost true. Almost all of the violins were hand-drawn. Yeah, that was good. But yeah, I think that pretty much wraps it up for the visuals. We should probably get into the music. Sorry, guys. We're getting pretty long on this episode. Yeah, I think And I'm we very just... hot because we turned the AC off and it's like super hot outside. And I'm just like... Yeah, I'm glad you said you're getting hot because I'm starting to get hot too. Yeah, I'm like, it's probably like 80 degrees. And like your now. light just like switched off. Yeah, our light... Uh, the lights in the living room don't work anywhere either. I'm like... Really? My, yeah, and the hot water tank went out earlier this week. It's been a train wreck this week. Okay. But, we should probably get into our music now. Yeah, so... Intros... The first intro is amazing. It's a bop. I love the first intro, and any it's um it's by Goose House. What's the name of it? Hikari Nari or something. Something like that. You guys can just look it up. It's by Goose House. Just look up your line April first opening. It's really good. The second opening is pretty good, but it's, it's okay. Not as good as the first. The first opening is just so perfect. It's like I would listen to it, you know, if like I couldn't skip the intro. But if it gave me the option to skip the intro, I would skip the intro. Yeah, I mean, the first opening does really good at using the watercolor steels that are incorporated throughout the entire anime. Yes. And, like, I thought that was very good, and I loved that. The endings, the first ending I don't remember, but the second ending, like, I watched it through each time. Because yes. it's just so good. It, well, especially with, like, the song and everything, yeah. I think it fit very well with the, like, melancholy of exactly. that portion of the anime. Exactly. And then um, my favorite song from this entire anime is the final song played while, at the very end, I'm not going to say what was happening, but the very, like, last ten minutes of the anime, it's uh, Waki Kari Meki, Kari Miki, but it's not on Spotify, but, like, Oh, it's so it swells up and it it's it hits you hard. It hits you hard. No, honestly, when that song started playing, like I could feel feel the tears like welling in. up like, in my mm, eyes. This is good. It's really good. And then the use of classical music throughout the musical production of this show is amazing. All the performances, the use of the music and the colors in them. The musical director did a phenomenal job. With like all this of it. dude knew what he was doing. And like I was thinking about that, I'm like, okay, the music's not playing while you're watching, like reading the manga. So I'm like. Truly, this is one of the few animes that, like, you get a completely different experience when you watch it because you don't hear that music while you're, like, reading it. And you don't see those the vibrant colors as much. And I'm, like, very interested to see the the two different experiences you get from the two. But yeah. I thought it was really good. I mean, definitely, like, though the, like, composer for mm-hmm. the anime mm-hmm. didn't pick out, like, the classical pieces because they were already, you know picked out there, but, from the manga author but but the production of the music tied in with the dialogue while talking about the music i thought was really good oh beautifully done one thing i did want to talk about a little bit i think this is just because i'm more musically inclined for the people that don't know anything about music it'll explain like the the supporting cast the people the audience will explain to you why the performance is so good or so bad whereas like for me I would almost prefer it if no one was talking at all and just a few comments and just truly experienced the song with the, the visuals. But I also appreciate them explaining why it was good or not because there's sometimes I'm like, that is, sounds no different. And they're like, oh my gosh, it's awful. You sound so like you're hitting the keys too hard and stuff. But the use of the colors while playing that music, I thought was very beautiful. And I love those performances. Especially, like the scenes with yeah. when everyone like played whatever, you know, like the cherry blossoms or the sunflowers. Exactly. Or- but um, I, there's this thing I wanted to do is like just ask Mo like what her fi- favorite performance is. So do you kind of want to talk about which performance was your favorite? I have to say that my favorite performance was the Love Sorrows mm-hmm. piece. Oh, just yeah. Just because that was just the culmination of like exactly. the whole reason that this we were watching this anime in the first place is mm-hmm. because is to get Kosei over his past trauma. Exactly. You know, and to like forgive 
everything that happened in his past and like that was probably one of the only times throughout the anime where I actually like you know teared up oh, and like yeah. cried you know it, because... it's that's a good one love sorrow is a really good performance because it was like you know like mom I forgive you like you know I'm gonna go on and like play now yeah and it, it's very beautiful I also mm. like the waltz that the Nagi. waltz is really good that Just was one because, of my like, favorites i'm a huge like, it's definitely my Tri-Voth, second favorite Tchaikovsky one. fan but you know i mean like for me my favorite one was emmy's performance when she played the winter's story the chopin piece um just because it's also it's a very well-known song but also just because the use of the very aggressive passion in it and the colors the the that showed her passion and loneliness the the yellows and reds like i was like oh it's so good and i think it was that first moment that Arima really was to realize, okay, the passion in music is important. Other people show that. Like, she is emulating that. She, he, like, when he played the very beginning with um, the violin and stuff, he started realizing music, like, the passion behind it. But when she performed, he was like, there is a reason why this happens. But yeah. I thought it was good. I mean, I just like the whole thing about, like, how she was like, you know, like, yeah. let it ring, like, exactly. you know, like, let it be heard and, you know, let, like, Kosei hear it. And, exactly. You know, let everyone hear it and let everybody know that, like, I am good, you yeah. know? And I love that. And she's like, guys, I'm still here. I just have been waiting for my passion to come back. And I was like, I love it. It's like I've been waiting for my moment. Yeah, it was really good. Um, The good and bad. Do you kind of talk about that for a little bit? Yeah, let's um, go for it. What do you think was kind of... Okay, I mean, I feel like we've kind of talked about all the great things about this entire I mean, anime. Yeah. The animation, the music, the characters, the de- how they dealt with the dr- the depression and the trauma they've been through and all that. The emotional points, the use of the color palette, all absolutely amazing. Um, the other side, I kind of wish there was, like I already said, I wish there was less dialogue during the music parts. Because I feel like that was overwhelming to a certain extent. I did feel like the the love triangle was kind of like overused, I thought. That was kind of boring, but kinda also, cliche. yeah, kind of cliche. I thought if they did something different, it might have been more unique. But I mean, as really it, yeah. That, I mean, the plot's got a little predictable, but is it really that bad? Because it still hit hard because they dealt with the topic so well. But I don't know. That's, I mean, that's all I thought was bad. I mean, what about you? I mean, I just like when it comes to animes like that that are really chock full of drama they tend to have very long monologues yeah that's true and they tend to really just like run with it and like you know take forever and that's just kind of like one reason that it took me a really long time to watch this anime just because like i really hate long monologues yeah you're right just like i hate long battle arcs i hate long monologues too and it did kind of feel in some points it was kind of stretched out but overall this anime is uh, i must watch i mean it's definitely like one that I would recommend. Oh yeah, it's you not guys one that I'd be like need no. to watch this. Um, it for sure is one of the best. Um, I think I kind of want to talk about like the moments that made me kind of tear up. So like full disclosure, guys, these are heavy spoilers. I would skip this part if you have not seen the anime. Go yet. watch the anime. Yeah, and like I would like we we already said you guys got a good idea of what the anime is. It's beautiful. Go watch it, experience it. But even then, I I rewatched it a second time. I still it hit me harder the second time watching it. So knowing what happens doesn't really affect your experience. I feel like, but yeah. So Mo, what was what moments kind of made you tear up a little bit at the show? I mean, like definitely the whole thing of like you know with like Cowdy dying and mm-hmm. like her, you know, because. From, like, episode probably, like, 12 to the end, we really don't see too much of her, yeah. you know? And, you know, just the moments of, like, you know, her saying, like, let's die together. Or oh, that hit hard. Like, her let's commit double suicide. seizing oh. up in the hospital, you know, with Kosei and Watari, like, right there, like, watching yep. her. And, like, those moments were just, like, hard, and it just, like, almost made me, like, want to, like, stop watching it because it just... They, it's so hard to it's watch. It's so hard to watch. Which is why I felt they said did so well with those moments. I mean, like, for me, those moments didn't hit me that hard. What hit me harder was, one, when Arma is literally getting beat by his mom in public and no one doing anything pissed me off. But 
that I'll, it kind of took me out of left field. I was like, what the fuck? I thought that was hard. And then when he said, I wish you just died. Like, I wish you would just die at this point. And him, the guilt he felt from that hurt so much. He, no, when that scene, like, popped up, I was literally screaming at my laptop, like, stop, stop. Like, like I'm like, what the hell are you doing? And like, then, she's beating her kid with a yeah. cane. And then the let's die together comment, I, like, hit me hard. And then when they're on the rooftop when it's snowing and she's literally breaking down and saying, I don't want you guys to forget about me. I don't want to die. And she's just crying. She's like, I don't want to be forgotten. I hope I, my music touched someone's heart. And I was like, that just hit me in a way that truly made me tear up. And like, I talked to Chase about it. He's like, that's the only moment I teared up too. He's like, that hit hard. Or it was like, you know, she was such like a bright, like, you know, it was the first time we've ever seen her break down oh, and yeah. be like, you know, like vulnerable for mm-hmm. a second. And then, like, the lie. I mean, that lie didn't hit me that hard, but, like, I'm not going to say what it is. That kind of... That, I mean, like, you know... It kind of surprised me, but also didn't, but kind of came out of left field. I was very surprised by it. The lie in April. Yeah, and I was like, okay, I well, see She it. was like, and I only told one lie. I was like, oh, my God. And it, it, it surprised me, And but what hit me the hardest was at the end of the letter that, he's, that Arma's reading with the music. Keep in mind, that music hit hard. That we were talking about. Yeah, and that ending song... He's, she's like, will you remember me from time to time? That, I actually cried at that moment. Because, like, I had just watched, you know, the rooftop scene. And I was like. Yeah, you had literally Snapchatted me. And I you was were, like, like bawling I wasn't. I wasn't bawling. Like, I was just. I you had looked like a up. mess. Not as bad as when I watched Assassination Classroom. They did the roll call. And I cried for two hours after that. <laughs> Keep in mind, that was just after, <laughs> like, very stressful week of school. But, like, that hit me hard. But. That was just like, I don't know, the way she said it with the music, I was just like, and he was like, of course I'll remember you. And she's like, will you keep me in your heart? And I was just like, like, it just, for me, like the vulnerability, the fact that she was about to die and she wrote this letter and she was like, will you remember me? Will anyone remember me? And I was yeah. like, oh. uh, definitely one part is the one like at the end where he's like playing the piano and then like Cowardy's like spirit like appears oh, no, that's and a good like one. he's playing with him and then like the part that really got me was like when he was like please don't go don't leave me you know and and i was she just burst into i think flowers or butterflies i don't know what they were and i was just like that was good i think i was just in the feels at that point and then i think the letter just set me over even like no i knew what was gonna happen at the end like i definitely knew that cowdy was gonna die Mm -hmm. but um it's just like throughout watching it it's this anime does such a good job of like making you like yeah. hoping that like it's going to change but you know it's exactly. not i mean those are pretty much all the moments i feel like um so you guys hopefully skip that part if you haven't watched the anime but if you guys are back um i feel like that's pretty much our entire review of this show yeah um, we definitely give it a like stream this it this right show now. is one I only have two shows ranked as ten out of ten on my on Mal and it's Steins Gate and Your Line April. Only two shows that I'm like I haven't given mine a rating yet, but definitely it's gonna get rated high. Yeah. It's, wait, no, Your Line April's a nine. I don't remember. Oh Steins oh, Gate well, well, and Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood are the ten out of tens. And it's I only have like two nines. It and so like this is one of those that it's very good. I would definitely watch it. Um, It'd be one that, like, I definitely would recommend to yeah, anybody that's for looking sure. for, you know, exactly um, a good cry, maybe. Maybe I think this is a good time to go into, like, the music recs for this week. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Um, do you... Who do you... How about you go first? Okay. I mean, okay, this is not much of a surprise because I felt like I was watch, I was reviewing this, trying to figure out my music rec, and I had a couple I wanted, but I was like, honestly, the music rec I'm going to do is that ending song from the very end of this anime the the song by Waki yeah yeah the uh what was it it's Kara Mickey um it's not on Spotify and I couldn't find an iTunes so I just had to watch it on YouTube but like just because you can't add it to your playlist does not mean you shouldn't listen to it like right now there's three songs I wish were on Spotify they're not it's the um Guilty Crown opening song the first one which I found an English cover for this song which I have not been able to find an English cover for and then the opening song for another, the accordion one. Ah, uh, yes. So all three of those, I would watch those on YouTube because they hit hard, especially this song. Like, it's so beautifully done with the violin and the piano and just the swells and his voice. And 
Oh, it's just so good. So, Mo, what was what's your music rec this week? All right, I've been like listening to this song though for like the past week, so I'm kind of excited about okay, it. Okay. Um, it is to the opening to the Ancient Magus Bride. Oh, okay. I've never seen it, but I know you love it's this. It's so good. Uh, I found it on iTunes, and I've just been like listening to it because it's such a good song. It's called "Here" by Juna. Okay. J U N N A. But it's such a good song. Like, oh, yeah. it's so bright and happy i will definitely add it to my playlist like i'll I'll add a link i've been adding links into um our description so just go in the description we'll have like our recs and it'll say what opening it is and so just go listen to that i'm just said it'll bring it to the spotify link if it is one if not i'll do a youtube link and if it's not on you i'll try to do an itunes link too i just don't have itunes iTunes link i don't know youtube y'all can just google it (laughs) sorry i'll put i'll put some trust in y'all but yeah, that's yeah. our music rex. Uh, Mo, do you want to do the social media plug now? Yeah, let's do our social media plug. So, yeah, we are on Twitter and Instagram. So go like, follow us, and tell us what you want. Subscribe. Subscribe. Um, our Instagram handle is Vinger's Anime Edition, the title of our lovely podcast. And then our Twitter handle is Anime Ventures. Yeah. Um, also, if you could go on iTunes and leave us a review or if whatever app you're using and leave us a review, that would be very helpful. Also, I don't know how to yeah, read reviews. Yeah, tell us what you want to see and tell us if we're even just doing a good job. Yeah, just talk to us. We would love to talk to you guys. Like, All we're here for is trying to create a safe environment for people to talk about their animes, especially right now. I feel on every social media platform, if you share your opinions and your you get hated even by other weebs now. And like, we just want everyone to feel comfortable sharing what they like and what they want us to review and everything. Yeah. Let's just have like a calm, nice, fun discussion. Exactly. About anime. Like, I mean, Chase, you gave a great recommendation for us to do. And yeah, thank you, Chase. Yeah, I know. Thank I've been trying you. to get Mo to watch this for like months and she won't watch it. So I'm really glad that we forced her to this time. So thank you. But I could say the same thing about you and Haikyuu. I'm but... starting to watch it after I finish D. Grayman. I literally have like four episodes left. But um, yeah, thank you guys so much for listening to us and talking yeah, to thank us. Yeah, so much. It, it means the world that anyone listens to us. Like, I was only expecting like three of my friends listening to this, and I was like, okay. Now we have about fifty people that are listening. Yeah, I'm to like, us. heck yeah! I'm like, thank you guys so much. Alrighty, Mo. I almost forgot that we probably should do the draw for next week. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, I'm I just, so excited. We haven't drawn in a minute. Like, it's been a month. Yes. So, oh, can I draw this time? Yes, you can yeah. draw this time. Sorry, the jar is underneath the table. I hope I don't jump. Yeah, my mom gave us um, my mom gave us a cookie jar, <laughs> so it has all the enemies in it. Hoo-hoo. Okay, okay. Oh, it smells like spice. Mmm. Thank you. Swish it around good. Yeah, maybe I'll get one of my shows this time. Hopefully, it's not something like super mainstream. I mean, we got Demon Slayer last time, and that one was yours. Yeah, that one really well. That one went really well. Okay. Oh my What is God. it? What is it? <laughs> it's the one I was watching at the very beginning of the podcast. It's Orbo Suki. Oh, it's the bench one. The bench one. <laughs> yes. Oh, this is such a good one. I'm I excited. I finished that one. So. I finished it. I'm not going to rewatch it because I watched it like a month ago. So I'm probably just going to write a review. I'm going to rewatch it because I haven't seen it and I kind of forgot about it. Yeah, but... this is a good one, guys. Like it's It's a lot like Monthly Girl, but it's a lot more Jekyll than Hyde, like, I guess. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's like... All the characters have, like, split personalities. Oh, it's great. I love it so much. I think you guys will really like this one. Oh, you drew one of yours. I know. I'm surprised, too. Wow. I know. Look at me go. <laughs> but, yeah, guys, tune in for this. It's a rom-com. It'll be great. Um, Thank you guys so much for listening to us. Yeah, um, definitely. We really could not do this without you guys. Really appreciate everything you're doing. Keep talking to us. Keep messaging us, preferably on Instagram because it's what we check the most. Yeah, keep telling us, like, what you're binging. All right, but yeah, good luck binging, y'all. All right, see you later. All right, bye-bye. Bye. Bye.